And you're also watching on the free streams at InfoWars.com forward slash show on this 12th day of July. We're now halfway into 2015, really hard to believe. We are simulcasting across the United States, and as I said, simulcasting with the podcast, the audio feeds, video feeds at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Just look at these headlines. Offended flea market shopper calls 911 over Confederate merchandise. I was shaking and almost vomiting. That story is from the American Mirror up on DrudgeReport.com. This is the mental illness mind control, where people now go in the National Cathedral and see a stained glass relief of the surrender of the Confederate forces at the end of the Civil War, and they just, ah, like 10 minutes of hate from 1984. They see it. And, of course, most Americans, you ask them when the Civil War was, they don't even know the decade, some of them the century or who was involved. Eight out of ten Californians we've talked to randomly and think that Independence Day was uh, from the South because the South is now the enemy. You see, we have this twisted, warped, globalist culture where there's no information, no no facts, just 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 mindlessness. Meanwhile, Donald Trump comes out, and you would think that this is the only thing happening in the universe. We're in like week three. And says a lot of criminals are coming in from all over the world and from Latin America. Not good workers, not smart folks, not good people. We need to stop the felons coming in. That's like saying we need to keep drug dealers out of schoolyards. And they just go, it's insane, it's incredible, it's horrible. He's the worst person in the world to overthrow reality and common sense. And it's perfect because Trump is a huge Hillary Clinton donor. I don't trust him as far as I could throw him, but he's saying stuff that's true. Trump will take our country back. Trump tapping into inner anger. Republicans, 17 contenders battle to stand out in the crowd. And what Trump's doing is standing out by telling the truth. And we've now reached the point where People are at museums, I've seen articles, and they see a Confederate flag or a Nazi flag, and the two are really separate, completely so. The Confederate flag's like 3% slavery. The Nazi flag is 100% megalomania, takeover, conquest, genetic engineering, uh, dystopic utopia garbage. But of course, the real spirit of the Nazis runs things today because they were just one manifestation. They were not the daddy. They were the baby. Walmart to melt class rings bearing a Confederate flag rather than complete orders. That's right. You can't go if you went to one of these universities that has this symbol and get it. Even though it's tiny, you can't really see it on the ring. This is the mental illness. And then people who've had all their basic rights and freedoms taken, they don't care if troops are under IBM computers that say do not give treatment so humans can say they weren't involved in killing them. They don't want to fight true, beyond Nazism from the actual company that ran the Nazi death camps. They want to just see a Confederate flag that was incredibly popular in the North until the 60s and 70s because it was so honorable uh, and because it fought and won battles of 3 to 1, 5 to 1, 10 to 1. I mean, the British War College still studies the Confederate generals. Militaries all over the world did because they won some of the biggest battles ever when they were outnumbered. I mean, that's why in our, the U.S. Army, there's so many bases named for Confederate generals and why, until recently, be on the side of tanks was because this is like a symbol of some badass people. But instead, they've just inverted reality and real Nazis are running everything and we're in a giant extermination grid with poison in the water. China's stock market went down more than 40% last week. Greece is collapsing. The euro is in trouble. Our dollar has been more devalued than even what 
caused the Weimar Republic to slide into its collapse and ultimately lead to World War II. But you would think the only story in the universe is Memphis, Tennessee, digging up General Forrest, a Confederate general, to have his body removed because it's so evil. Or this article, offended flea market shopper calls 911 over Confederate merchandise. I was shaking and almost vomiting. That is the triumph of mind control over a politically ignorant population. They had a big national poll out last Monday. It showed 19% of Americans know what the First Amendment is in a national poll. The right of religion, the right of free speech, the right to assemble, the right to redress. 19%. That's about what we found in California and in Austin, Texas. But in San Diego, uh, in L.A., our correspondents, our reporters go out. You've seen the videos. They're viral. And eight out of 10 want to ban water. Eight out of 10 want to ban salt. Eight out of 10 want to put all gun owners in forced labor camps or kill them. Eight out of 10 don't know what Independence Day is. Eight out of 10 want to open the borders completely. Eight out of 10, if you say for Obama, mainly white yuppies, but we got black folks, Hispanics, everybody on tape doing it. If you're a new listener, I'm not joking. We have the videos at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Mark Dice has done a lot of the videos out in California, MarkDice.com. There are hundreds of these videos. The latest was Obama supporters signed a petition to ban free speech. The one before that was 8 out of 10 not knowing what Independence Day is. And then we go out in Austin, Texas and show the exact same thing. And we're not cherry picking. But let me tell you, they walk into a flea market and they see some war memorabilia shop that has always been one of the most popular things with vets who like to collect things. And you're going to see RAF, that's Royal Air Force, the British. You're going to see U.S. Marines, Canadian military, Turkish military, South African military, Japanese military. I mean, there's nothing cooler when you're a kid. I used to go in there and just beg for the samurai sword, Dad, from World War II that was, you know, 500 bucks and I couldn't have it, obviously. If you own a Japanese samurai sword from World War II carried by their officers, it doesn't mean you supported the invasion of China or Korea. It doesn't mean you supported the invasion of uh, other areas. And, I mean, obviously, only a mentally ill, mental midget with an IQ below room temperature would know that obviously if I own a Japanese World War II samurai sword, I'm not a Nazi or I'm not a, a, a member of the Axis powers. I mean, quite frankly, the public's so mentally ill and so stupid. I, I'm just saying this to even bait them. I own a World War II Luger and a Walther. And one of them was given to me as a gift. The other I bought... Uh, th as an investment, uh, I bought the Luger for about $2,000. I could sell it for $15,000 right now. I'm a smart investor. I'm not an idiot. And it's a really cool gun. And it was carried by a German army officer. And I've got British World War II guns, U.S. World War II. It's cool. They're all real cool. And if you mental midget jackasses can't handle it, good. Go piss up a rope. And I'm sorry to have to talk like that, but dealing with it is insane. Dealing. France, years ago, and I told you it was coming here, banned Nazi uh, memorabilia being sold at their swap meets and their stores and online. And then next it was criticizing radical Islam. And then now, in California, they've got the bill introduced to ban, it's already in a bunch of cities, the use of the word mother and father because it's hurtful and husband and wife. See, because if you're a boy or a girl, that hurts someone. That's also being banned in schools. Boys and girls are now called purple penguins. That's mainstream news. The, vid the, the videos, the articles, the newscast are up on Infowars.com. So while all these serious things are going on, I'm going to cover this more later, This person walks in to a store 
and sees a rebel flag and goes into convulsions. By the way, the Clintons, for both presidential campaigns, used the rebel flag in the South on their official bumper stickers and signs. Millions were issued because even back then, everybody knew it had to do with Southern pride, period, and nothing to do with slavery. But the media made it about that. Offended flea market shopper calls 911 over Confederate merchandise. I see, and they want to ban free speech. A shopper pursuing the merchandise at the Redwood County flea market was so offended by a vendor selling Confederate and Nazi historical memorabilia, the person actually called 911. Wallingford, Connecticut police were dispatched to the flea market to investigate. They actually responded. Imagine, there's people selling Confederate flags and Nazi stuff, and the cops actually showed up. The police chief, William Wright, tells News 8 the reason no one was arrested was because the items were being sold on private property. Not to mention no laws were broken. Oh, oh, because the police all at the top go along with this because this is what they've been told to do. I was talking to my son about the summer camp he went to last year. He hadn't told me this till now. And I looked it up online and actually found the curriculum. They They changed the... He liked it, so but they changed the curriculum. It was more common sense now. This year, he just got back. And they were actually basically teaching Democratic Party hardcore socialist garbage. And it's a Protestant Christian camp. And that's because through the World Council of Churches, they tell these people what to teach and what to do. And it's just outrageous. And it's stuff you'd be taught in the public school, being taught. I, I mean, here was one thing. Men can only do some things. Women can do everything. Just, just weird, bizarre stuff. But this is what happens in America. I was shaking, he tells the paper. I had to run. I mean, this is just crazy. And, of course, the seller goes on to say, hey, I'm just selling what you can't keep in stock. Well, of course. I mean, I need to send our crew out to the next gun show and just, just show, you know, it, it's usually some old World War II vet behind the counter, but most of those guys are dead now. But it's always some vet behind the counter likes to collect stuff, and they're right there selling Army knives, Marine Corps knives, German knives, Greek knives, it's, and, and whatever's the rarest and the weirdest, you know, some Russian World War I dagger will be like $5,000. I mean, does that mean you support the Russians in World War I? I mean, and the average person just is so ignorant, they just want to feel important and powerful, so they just pick something and freak out about it. And, and I know I harp on this a lot. It's because this victory of ignorance over reality is what's going to bring the country and the world down. Donald Trump was mentioned, we're going to play this clip coming up after the break, 200 plus times. It's what's called a Trumpgasm. He was mentioned 239 times in 24 hours, just on mainstream television, on CNN. And I'm going to explain why they're doing this when we come back. I mean, we've gone over a lot of facets of it, but I'm going to give you the straight dope on Donald Trump and this three-dimensional chess they're playing and what you will see unfold with Trump, I'm predicting, uh, in the next year and a half. Then we're going to get into the latest on Greece, the latest military news, the latest hacking news, the latest antidepressant news, the latest gun news out of New York State that does affect everybody. Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central, we're here live. Back Sundays, 4 to 6 p.m. Central. I'm your host, Alex Jones. We're watching the takedown, not just of our country, but the world of the global technotronic technocracy that is using social engineering, tribal warfare to bring down the once sovereign countries of the world and to distract the populations that are being enslaved and fed on uh, with all the class warfare, race warfare garbage. And much of the ignorant public plays along with it like rats being led by the Pied Piper. But before I get into Donald Trump, I thought I'd play a chilling statement from Jimmy Carter 
former U.S. president, saying America is in inevitable decline, not Obama's fault. So while with one mouth they tell you everything's fine, it's the best economy since sliced bread, and on the other side they say, no, we're really in a global depression, but don't worry, it's not Obama's fault. Well, no, it's not Obama's fault. It's the uh, big private central banks that are engineering this whole show. They engineered Greece. They engineered the euro. They engineered what's happening in China to consolidate power. It's called economic warfare. So let's go to this chilling statement. Well, we're in an inevitable relative decline in worldwide influence. Not because of any fault of ours, but it's, uh, as I said, inevitable. I think that the combination of China and India and Brazil and South Africa and other others uh, as a increase in economic and, and uh, cultural uh, influence will replace a lot of the power and, and preeminence that the United States has, has uh, enjoyed in the past. So we're having, whether we like it or not, to accommodate that uh, necessity of, of, of realizing that other people are going to be as powerful and influential as we are in some aspects of life, not militarily. We'll stay preeminent there for a long time. But I think economically, China will soon you know, succeed the United States as the number one economic power in the world. All right, that's enough. And I think influence in politics. Ladies and gentlemen, let's be clear. Do you know what an egg sack is? A lot of different species have it whenever uh, the, the zygote's growing. Uh, before it fully attaches and creates a placenta to its mother, uh, it lives off of the uh, yolk sac. And the United States created the UN, created globalism, propped up China when 95% of their population was farmers and they couldn't produce a pot to pee in. And the globalists moved over there, put totalitarianism in that was centralized under them, built up China built up Mexico, built up India, that's globalism. At the higher levels, they tell you, well, we got to have a global government. we got to take America's wealth and build the rest of the world. But that's a lie, too. Because if you go to Mexico or China or India, on average, people are worse off than they were when they were agrarian and self-sufficient and happy. So this is the world in the hands of the globalist in their own words. Not what they put out on TV, but in their textbooks, in their battle plans. Why do you think Jimmy Carter signed the deal that took until 2000 to get done to transfer the Panama Canal that we built and that Panama didn't want us to give up and that was making the United States billions of dollars a year of profit? We just gave it to China. Because the robber barons have made a deal to carve up American hegemony and power that was gained through ideas and free market and invention and has grafted all of these countries in and their elites in to become powerful off of the United States. We are the egg sack. But we're not giving them our blood so they grow and are strong to then trade with us. We are putting elites in to duplicate globalism and bring in the one world government. So the United States blood and treasure and ideas have been used. And then we also take the blame for the military takeovers, which are really globalist. We fit the bill. Our sons and daughters die. They get put on no treat death list by the Watson computers at IBM. It's all cutesy. The Chinese are exploited. And they have suicide nets around the Apple factories, the Foxconn factories suicide nets, forced abortions, hell on earth, and the whole world sinks, a giant sucking sound, a devaluing. That brings me to my next subject. I don't know if Ross Perot was a shill. I know people that know him, they say he's the real deal. That said, at the key point where he started beating George Herbert Walker Bush and Clinton, he said, I've been threatened, my family's been threatened, I'm stepping down, I'm out of the race. I don't know if that really happened or not. I will tell you Donald Trump is one of the biggest contributors ever to Hillary Clinton. Just type it in. Donald Trump is a huge contributor. You can say he's just betting on both ponies in a race. 
fine, whatever. I know that he gets in elections, gets out of them. He's taking all the attention. The media is working with him to give him the attention. If somebody else was saying this, it would make him populist and popular. They would ignore it. So Trump goes and plays the part, gets all the attention. They have Trump gasms where they mentioned him 239 times in one day on CNN. He then basically down the road steps down or runs against Hillary, gets the nomination and then drops the ball. I believe he's going to drop the ball and get out earlier and have it be Jeb Bush or somebody else that's an insider. And the media will resuscitate him and say, oh, it really wasn't that bad. He was misunderstood. Mark my words. Mark my words. He's a ringer. Now, that said, if you're going to be a true ringer, you've got to lead the opposition to destroy it. He's saying we've got a lot of criminals coming in from around the world. There are people coming in to have their babies for free. Nobody else does this. We're going bankrupt. We can't do it. Totally true. Totally common sense. He then can be discredited because he doesn't even defend himself from past statements. He creates a false straw man. He says things like, we'll take our country back. That's what, that is what's needed. But it's all meant to block out the other 17 contenders. Now, I'm not going to play the two minutes of this, but this is just the last 20 seconds or so, the last dozen or so, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump of 239 times in 24 hours. Let's go ahead and play this clip. Donald Trump. 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 I think Donald Trump should just go on being Donald Trump. We're all having a Trump gasm. We're all having a Trump gasm because you can then misrepresent what Rand Paul and a few other good Republicans stand for. You can make a joke out of it by having everybody ridicule him. Then the sheep will kind of see that and go, ah, oh, it's ridiculous. He says criminals are coming in. That's like saying the ocean has water in it. It's so funny. He's just like a new Confederate flag, basically. They can then project on to the Republicans, even though the Confederate flag was and is a Democratic Party symbol. One of the few honorable things they have in their history. Well, we're in an inevitable relative decline in worldwide influence, not because of any fault of ours, but it's, uh, as I said, inevitable. I think that the combination of China and India and Brazil and South Africa and other, others uh, as a increase in economic and, and uh, cultural uh, influence. Will there you go. It's called the death of the West by design. They had a professor, it's in my stack, we're going to get to it in the U.S., come out and say that reason and logic is a racist Western idea. So are you saying illogic and barbarism is a uh, Eastern idea? Because I don't agree with that. There's a lot of really uh, good uh, knowledge and, 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 and information from uh, Chinese philosophy, uh, Indian philosophy, uh, Zen philosophy, Confucius. But the stuff that, that that's being pushed now is none of that. There is this vitriolic hatred of the West, hatred of the Renaissance, and it's because it's so liberal. So to destroy something, you must lead it. So the fake liberals lead the worldwide liberal movement, which is really hardcore anti-human fascism. It's inverted. And I don't think Jimmy Carter is a bad person. I think he is seriously a useful idiot. You know, he's got his brother out there selling beer. He's out there growing peanuts. Whatever, knock yourself out. We're declining, no fault of our own. Oh, really? Globalism 101. By the way, he did found the Trilateral Commission. So when I say he's not bad, he believes in all this. So Bigna Brzezinski is super evil. I've read his writings. Um, David Rockefeller, beyond evil. They founded it with Carter. He was their front man, and he believed in giving the Panama Canal and most of our deep water ports and everything to China and, and, and giving our national parks and, and the land around it as collateral to the UN. I mean, Jimmy Carter screwed this country over so bad, and he just thinks he's being friendly and nice to China and India when the globalists are exploiting those people. 
on average, they're not getting more wealthy. They're not getting more successful. You don't see CPS over in China taking people's kids that are chained up on poles when their parents are at work because they're there to be exploited. Here, they want to find a reason to take your kids because they can then suck you in and get money off of you in the system. The point is it's not a level playing field. They're making it impossible to operate inside the United States with taxes and regulations and all the things they do. And then Jimmy Carter sits there and says, of no fault of our own. No, it's the fault of globalism, which hasn't failed. People always go, globalism doesn't work. It creates poverty. It creates tyranny. It succeeded. There's a war against true freedom. Because true freedom creates so much success, so many inventions, so much innovation, so much human dignity that it doesn't allow a tiny elite of robber barons to control the paradigm. So they are in constant warfare with competition. And it was John D. Rockefeller I who said, type in the quote, he said it all the time in newspapers. He said it in radio interviews before he died, when radio was first invented. It, he, he was 99 when he died. He said, competition is a sin. Competition is a sin. Ultra rich, the most powerful people in the world, competition is a sin. And what do they always push for? Socialism and communism for the middle class. They're exempt offshore. What's exempt? The UN is tax exempt. Diplomatic community above the law. The Vatican. Diplomatic community tax exempt above the law. Washington, D.C. Diplomatic community tax exempt above the law. City of London within London Financial District. Tax exempt. Diplomatic community above the law. Should I keep giving you examples of this? And I know I harp on this because if we understand that, we understand everything. You've got a super class above the law. You've got all these filthy rich like Obama and the Pope lecturing about how evil rich people need to give more. You've got Warren Buffett constantly going, I pay less taxes than my secretary. That's wrong. When he was the biggest recipient of the bailout. He personally got like $10 billion. His company in the first round, $400 plus billion. And then you find out he lobbied for tax exemption for himself in the 80s. That's even been in McClatchy and other papers. George Soros is getting sued right now, and they've actually got bills in Congress to make him pay something like $10 billion in back taxes. Just type in Soros may have to pay $10 billion back taxes because he lobbied to get middle class taxes raised, but that bastard is tax exempt. There's one headline. Buffett, champion of bailout, is also a leading beneficiary. You've got this pope. You've got Obama going to Africa saying you can't have cars or air conditioner when he's got the biggest footprint of them all, uh, carbon-wise. It's all, but, 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 but they're not hypocrites in the purest sense. They're not saying this just because they're hypocrites is what I'm getting at. They're doing it cold-bloodedly. Talking down to you because they want you to learn. You don't get the new technology. You don't get the innovation. You don't get the life extension. You don't get a level playing field. I mean, what do you call modern liberalism? Dodgeball's banned, tag is banned, chase is banned, schools all over the country, the feds tell you what you can eat. You can't say boy or girl, purple penguin, because boy or girl is hateful, because someone else might not be a boy or girl, so all communications are hateful, and you can't use them, except what is new and prescribed on that very day by state-run media, and if you follow the daily download of what's pro popular and trendy, then you'll be in the cool crowd and be brought in to the fold, which is to be a total failure and used. That's another thing. Following the system enslaves you. You're supposed to go get two degrees. You're supposed to wait till you're 40 to try to have kids so you can't. Uh, you're supposed to you know, follow all their ideas, eat their GMO. That's the thing. Doing what they say. It's not like you join the Roman legions and you become powerful and rich if you can live 10 years. You join the New World Order and get screwed over. But 
psychologically, you are an empowered group. And when you watch TV, it talks about your group having power. So even though you don't have power, you imagine you have power to go into a swap meet and to find people selling war memorabilia and you find a Confederate flag or a swastika and you urinate on yourself in pleasure because now you can be somebody and, 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 and this is something you know and you can squawk and call the police to have them arrested even though it's not illegal. You want to live in a totalitarianism because you could point at the symbol of something you say was totalitarian. I mean, I see the reports, people now walk into museums and freak out. In fact, the word is museums are pulling swastikas out because the patrons are so stupid, they walk into, the, say, the Pacific War Museum. I was told this by one of their people off record, a listener. They said, man, you're right about this political correctness. He goes, you know, there, this is mainly about the Pacific War, but there were a couple swastika flags back there, and people were complaining. I mean, it's full of... Japanese, it's incredible. One of the best museums I've ever seen, right in the middle of nowhere outside Austin. It's the George Herbert Walker Pacific War Museum. But the point is, is they, they, I was told they quietly are pulling swastikas out of there because people go to World War II Museum and they can't handle seeing it. I mean, I told you, they're talking about pulling swastikas and Hitler out of textbooks because it's, a, I mean, this is book burning. This is Jim Jones cult stuff, folks. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're under a program of eugenics that spawned the Nazis. And our troops are put on don't treat list by IBM computers that are killing them. You ever wondered why suddenly in your town your water bill doubles in a year? Ever wonder why your power bill, most areas of the country's doubled in the last seven years? Well, here's the headline, New York Times. It's up on DrudgeReport.com. We've got it linked on Infowars.com as well. Eurozone leaders met on Greece after finance ministers hit impasse. And it says they're discussing selling off Greek assets for a new bailout, which they admit won't even get them bailed out of debt. And I have another article here where they go, why is the only country to ever get out of its debt Iceland? Well, they told Iceland they owed $5.5 billion six years ago. We had members of their parliament on, like Brigitte jones Dottier and others. They arrested the finance minister and they went in and got the files and 93% of the debt was owed by British and U.S. and European banks that they had gotten the finance ministry to sign on to in bailouts. And that's why we're told we're one of the biggest debtors in the world is mainly uh, we've signed on to the derivatives of uh, international banks that sold mortgages and other uh, fraudulent instruments over and over again. Oh, you can sell a mortgage once. You can't sell it five times or 30 times or 56 times, as some were. And when you read deeper, uh, Goldman Sachs and others are now being sued for fudging the debt, manipulating, and lying so that the Greek budgetary program could be accepted for entrance into the EU. Greek debt crisis, London Independent. Goldman Sachs could be sued. Oh, they are being sued for helping hide debts when it joined the euro. And, of course, who then gets to administer all this but Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan? And, again, I'm not saying if you work at J.P. Morgan, you're a bad person, or if you work at Goldman Sachs, you're even bad. They have a lot of legitimate business operations. But at the top, these are two of the biggest banks in the world, Goldman Sachs being a big brokerage, but it's still a bank, loans to governments, these are the people that are financing the open borders, the globalism, getting our guns. They want a domesticated world they can control. So when everything collapses, they're the last people standing. There was a J.P. Morgan email that we got a few months ago that became national news that was sent out by the head of J.P. Morgan, biggest bank in the world, 
watching. The end game is here. The dark collapse that's coming will be used and we will be on top. But prepare yourselves. This is the moment of truth. I mean, you can pull up the full letter. And when J.P. Morgan got contacted, they said, yeah, that's our email. There, there's the headline. J.P. Morgan, Chase CEO, economic crisis inevitable. There will be another crisis and its impact will be felt by the financial markets, he wrote. If you scroll down, there's all the other bizarre cryptic statements about the end game has arrived and the rest of it. And as I've been telling you before all this broke loose, we are now past the event horizon. I want to open the phones up in the second hour for first time callers. I haven't done that in about a week or two. First time callers of the first round. All I ask is you have a good phone and have a point you want to make, and we'd love to hear from you on any of the issues I've raised. The political correctness being a total tyranny by design, the Greek situation, Donald Trump, all these other issues we've raised. How big a year do you think this is going to be into next year? Do you think the global meltdown is going to intensify? We've been predicting it's coming. It's now here. How bad will it get? Will Americans living in their bubble get politically involved? Because we've been the center of funding and supporting the world government while the media talked to us like we were three years old and said, none of that exists, pumpkin. There's no plan for planetary government with carbon taxes. And the Pope comes out and calls for it a month ago. Remember just seven years ago when Endgame came out. I remember putting it in there right after he said it. He just said it as the film was almost done. I added Al Gore at the end going in Congress. They go, well, this is just a plan for you to have carbon taxes and tax everything by the mile, and you're part of a company that will make the money. And Al Gore goes, yes, and the moon landing never happened. There is no carbon tax. This has nothing to do with that. And the congressman went, but I mean, you own the company. You're lobbying. And Al Gore goes, preposterous. I, I mean, I could play the clip. Just like whenever... Ross Perot was going, giant sucking sound, Larry King. You do this, but Canadians were making $40 an hour. And within a couple of years of them opening up their border to free trade with us, they were making $20 an hour. Now, now, Larry, that's because we were making 15 to 20 We open up Mexico. It's not going to even help their workers. You're going to hear a giant sucking sound. We're going to go from 20 to 15 down to about 10 And, and then the auto industry is going to leave, Larry. And then it's going to leave Mexico to China or India. And then Mexico is going to collapse. And then where are they going to go? They're going to come here, Larry, and drive down wages even more, Larry. Listen, I've made personally in my own life $10 billion. I mean, I know how business works here. Al Gore would get up there and go, with his Nelly self, his dandy self, would go, he could just, oh, he's just gross, man. He, he sits there and goes, now that's ridiculous conspiracy theory. This is a good deal, Larry. And I had to sit there and watch that lying piece of trash. It's in Endgame, towards the end. Say that he's not involved in carbon taxes or carbon trading when he's one of the main owners of it worldwide. So the toll-free number to join us is 877-789-2539, 877-789-2539. Different number on Sunday than the weekday show. 877-789-ALEX, I'd love to hear from you. But, but speaking of political correctness before I go any further, I was just thinking, and I'm actually going to do a White House petition tomorrow, and I'm going to get serious about this. If we need to ban museums having Nazi flags or, or Confederate flags they mix together with it wrongly, uh, and if they're going to try to go into gun shows where people are just shelling war, war memorabilia, you know, the more the better. They'll have them from hundreds of different armies. I think we should call for the ban of Raiders of the Lost Ark and every other film that shows swastikas because it's just a hate symbol, and if you're showing it, you're promoting it. And Raiders of the Lost Ark shows hundreds of swastikas on the backs of planes, uh, on the sides of crates, uh, everywhere, and it's it's hateful. And, and when people see these, you know, that's the headline, they begin to vomit, they begin to hyperventilate. Um, I want it banned right now. Okay? I mean, I really got to wonder about Steven Spielberg now, because if you display these, you must be for it.
and he's got Nazis marching with him. And all I know is I'm scared and I'm offended right now. <laughs> I think I'm supposed to I gotta keep this going. Meanwhile, the Euro was a Nazi program plan, and now Germany's corrupt elite that sucked their own taxpayers dry, propping up the Euro, just like America props up the global government. Germany's propping it up while it collapses, has now taken over Greece and is giving them debts that aren't theirs. And Greek people now face six months of cash controls, the Sunday Times is reporting. Then coming up, leaked documents show FBI, DEA, and Army can control your computer. Technology is so invasive, even the DEA had reservations about purchasing it. And what it allows them to do is put stuff on your computer. That's really what it is, under so the sneak and peek provision of the Patriot Act. Some good news. Cuomo agrees to suspend background checks for ammo. There was no law. He was just doing background checks if you tried to buy ammo. It was part of the SAFE Act that they tried to federally pass, but it didn't work. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo has agreed to suspend the proposed requiring background checks for ammunition sales in the state in the face of Republican opposition and technical difficulties. Of course, it turns out that all these shooters got their guns illegally, including the guy at the black church. So we're going to go over all of that coming up. Antidepressants use rising among teens and young adults. Of course, it causes psychotic breaks in a minority of people, so... Cops, when somebody just randomly comes up to shoot you in the head or shoot somebody else, just know it's not the gun. You know, they're going to be on psychotropics as they always are about 99% of the time. I mean, I, I say that because, I mean, we haven't found a case yet where just a senseless robot killing wasn't from these drugs. But I'm sure they exist. So we'll just say 99% to be safe. All this and more huge transmission coming up. Don't forget, we've got free shipping in the month of July on all of the t-shirts, books, films, seeds, uh, high quality vitamins and minerals and nutraceuticals at InfoWarsStore.com. And your purchase funds this operation and makes it all possible. So thank you for supporting us. We're all in this together. InfoWarsStore.com. All right, here's what I want to do. I want to go directly to your phone calls. I'm going to smatter science and technology, weather news, world news, economic news I haven't gotten to yet. But right now, let's go to your phone calls. Jeff in Knoxville, Tennessee, you're on the air. Welcome. Alex, how are you today, brother? I'm doing okay, my friend. Welcome. Hey, long time, well, about five, six year listener. Love the show. Um, it's just kind of funny. Every day I wake up and it's you, you kind of go through your day, but then all of a sudden you start looking at all the data, especially when I listen to your show, and it, it's kind of, kind of uh, eye-opening, to say the least. But, well, yeah, uh, I mean, how Twilight Zone is it just interrupt? that all over the country they've banned tag and dodgeball, and now they're telling children boy and girl is a hateful word, you're a purple penguin. I mean, this is something out of a hallucination of a crackhead. But, I mean, we're it's because we follow the orders. We follow the cultural directives of a bunch of sick freaks. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, you're you're right. And, and you know, one of the same famous quotes, just listen to your show now, I've become much more... Um, history minded and just learning some different things about history. And one of my favorite quotes is Edmund Burke. Um, all that is necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. You know, when you go back to Reagan, um, what was it? Um, but, uh, trust but verify. So it's, it's all these things that they're what our original founder said in the document. And that's exactly what they're doing with the global government. They're just trying to make everything inverted upside down and and it's funny i'll just just a brief comment i'll go out i'm in like when i wake up now i'm in full-time usa one mode just like the, the sticker would be on the chevelle you know so i'll just go up to someone and say direct hey what do, what do you think about this country what do you think about our leaders and either the lights on as as you bring up with your show these people see this tyranny or they don't and more and more the people on the left side of the paradigm or the right they either see it or they don't well, that's right. And they try to put us in groups. And I talk about transcending the left-right paradigm. But at a moment when the globalists win their propaganda war, it becomes a left-right paradigm. Whereas even though the Republican leadership are bad people and sell us out to TPP, abortion, Obamacare, it is the conservatives and the libertarians that at least know how to tie their shoelaces and at least are for private property, family rights, the right to self-defense and common sense. And Democrats... 
have become a bizarro cult. Uh, but I'm glad you mentioned this part about you're either in one camp or the other. And what we have is a secession of individuals. People have pulled out of the system. They're pulling out more and more. And all the globalists have done is by tripling down their propaganda, they forced a lot of people who would have trusted in the system because they thought overall it was good to break with it. And I, I don't think, I know the globalists have miscalculated in long term, they will fail. There's going to be a major backlash to what they've done. The problem is if they get their way, they may irrevocably damage the planet, have a giant nuclear war. Who knows? They've got to be stopped because they're so dangerous. So conventionally, they're failing if you look at the scheme of history. But they're not failing because they might blow the earth up. You see where I'm coming from here? Yeah, and, um, and I'm, I'm blanking on the term right now, but it's um, not in integral thinking. But pe people have lost the art of thinking. Critical. Thank you. Critical thinking. And there was, I think I heard on your show, but uh, a few months ago, there was a discussion with a leading professor or someone, and that's what this particular person said. There's a lack of critical thinking. And that's what the corporations do. That's what the government does. That's what our media does. And people should be critical when Obama says raising the debt doesn't raise our debt. Again, that's an inversion. And you and I, that just makes us get sick at our stomach or laugh. Young people growing up that have accepted this, they're growing up an upside-down world. Imagine how disoriented they are. I mean, there's a wonder. God bless you. Great call, Jeff, from Knoxville, Tennessee. Great, great uh, city there. We got two affiliates in that area. We're going to come back and go to Pete, Matt, Paul, Steve, and many others. I'm Alex Jones, and I haven't even gotten to the story on InfoWars.com yet. Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. I'm live. We're back Sundays live. It is the 12th day on this Sunday. We are transmitting across the globe. I have made the decision to go to Europe. The financial meltdown that will undoubtedly spread to Italy and Spain and Portugal uh, is underway. I'm intending to go to Greece. I'm intending to go to Italy, intending to go to Spain. And I'm going to be setting that up uh, the next few days and announcing when I'm going. But it's important enough that I'm going to be broadcasting from there and reporting live from the middle of it. Because this is all a microcosm of what we face. The latest Greek exit drama, noting a default, is imminent. The only country to effectively ameliorate a debt crisis that was similar has been Iceland. All market bubbles must return to their inception point. This is from Investment Watch. We're going to be going over Harry S. Dent's article. Uh, coming up, antidepressant use among teens and young adults skyrockets to the highest level ever. Leaked documents show FBI, DEA, and Army can control your computer with the stroke of a key. Maryland State Song targeted for having Confederate sympathies. Uh, I read the Maryland State Song as part of the North. It was part of the victorious party in the, in the Civil War. And I read it and can't find any Southern sympathies. But again, uh, we live in a country where they're banning the word boy and girl, husband and wife in California and in public schools because it's hurtful to those that aren't boys or girls or don't have a husband and wife. Because if you can do that, you can do anything. So I would expect them to ban that. It's actually hearkening back to 1776, but I guess that does talk about fighting government tyranny and despots. So uh, that's alarming the NAACP, so they want that banned. And I'm sure they'll get what they want because the establishment wants to get us all used to things being banned. Because if you're a bunch of offshore banks looting this country and the rest of the world, you use weaponized media to get everybody fighting with each other. Where Seattle, remember, I use this as my best example, three years ago, put out a memo saying, do not say in any memos we're having a brown paper bag lunch, meaning take your lunch to this meeting or we're not going to have food served. When you're having a seminar or something or when you're going to be providing for $2, they had examples in the memo, uh, selling, don't say brown paper bag because that's hateful. No one had ever said brown paper bag meant racism. It means just the classic brown paper bag. But now they're having memos out. That's why I joked about this on Thursday, saying, uh, you know, don't talk in media about crushing the blacks, because that's a term used, it doesn't do with black people, when you crush blacks to make them deeper dark uh, in a video system, 
I'm not an engineer, but that's basically how it works. That's hateful. Putting your elbows on a dark table is a sign of racism. Uh, it, it's everywhere. In fact, telling a minority they've done a good job, according to the University of Wisconsin, uh, just saying, good job. Not good job, you're black, or good job, you're Hispanic. Just, just good job. You just shake in fear, like the MTV show has come out and said, and go, I don't know what to do. I just am bad. I well, And the government goes, you do what we say exactly, and we won't call you that. Is that okay? Yes, please don't call me that. I'm a 15-year-old zit-faced white kid full of guilt, and I'm sorry I did all this. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I'm a, good. Take your vaccine, support Obamacare, turn your guns in. Meanwhile, they're running black op operations, murdering people all over the world. New York Times admits they go into African villages and kill everybody to make it a U.N. biosphere zone. Oh, wait, but that doesn't matter. They killed them or they abort half the black people or all the rest of it. I just said black ops. Oh, my gosh. That doesn't mean secret in the dark. It means I was being racist. Oh, I'm sorry. Because people aren't literate on facts or history. They just know how to be offended now. There's even talk about offended by short haircuts. That's a sign of racism. Or, or I, I've seen news articles. Is it racist when a white guy's got a shaved head? Oh, obviously. And now the Daily Caller. Reason itself is a white male construct and racist. <laughs> you see, it's an overthrow of common sense. Two plus two equals five. People have to learn. I'm not saying all this. As a colloquialism, I'm not saying this is rhetoric. I'm not saying this to make a point as hyperbole. This is scientific takeover. They've decided to go with the most hardcore, over-the-top system. And it's working well. So that's coming up. We're going to go to break and come back and go to your calls, but I thought I would uh, mention this. As I see these articles every day, and I've decided I usually ignore them because I, I saw it from one paradigm that it just causes more racial division, but actually it doesn't. There's an attempt to whip all whites into a self-loathing guilt to support financing killing black people and those of color all over the world and globalist imperialism on our dime. Uh, and while breeding incredible hatred of whites with Democratic Party politics to forge minorities into a new race cult as they become the minority in the next five years, nationwide next five years, already the majority in most states. So now... Whites wouldn't be racist, so the Democrats had to stop being the Klan party. And so they flipped to the new Make the Minorities Based on Race, sung a Kumbaya song to then double cross and come in and turn them into a race cult. So MTV's White People trailer under fire, promoting white shame, stirs debate, and grabs spotlight. Exactly what filmmaker wants. Oh, who wrote that article? New York Daily News. Let's make fun of Drudge after he linked to our article about it on Tuesday. And it was the number one news story according to uh, major metrics like Google Analytics in the country. That's right. We had six million readers of that story in two days. So exactly what we want. You got defeated. You got exposed as an illegal alien trying to create division and race baiting probably for the Ford Foundation. You got exposed for what you did, and you put out tweets saying, I don't want to shame white people, when in earlier tweets you said you did. But now you claim it's exactly what you wanted. You're sick. You've jumped the shark. So I'm going to cover this. ABC7 exclusive. Woman attacked by group near U campus with kids in car. And we have the kids as witnesses and the windows knocked out. They were able to get away. And, and you know what I say? She was white. She should have been executed, hung up by her feet right there. I mean, listen, whites are inherently evil. Everything bad is is white. And I apologize. I, I, I really do for other white inventions, not just reason, as if that's a fraud, by the way. Reason is not a white invention. Uh, there's similar reason in every other philosophy, Chinese philosophy, Hindu philosophy, African parables. I mean, that is just a load of crap. But coming up, I'll play the white people trailer again. That's exactly what they want. Yeah, right. Exactly what you want. No, you want to sit there and guilt the little MTV kids who have parents dumb enough to set their children in front of that weaponized garbage. Sumner Redstone up there.
you know, six years ago admitting they're going to sexualize people under the age of 10, targeting children with sex. They at least have a name for that. Government teachers, everybody talking to your six-year-olds about sex and trying to push a sexual persuasion on them is called pedophilia. So when we come back, I'm going to go to your calls, and then in the last segment, I'm going to get to the children's uh, testimony of the news about being attacked. That was a lesson for them, and I bet they'll get even more guilty and apologize for their whiteness that they couldn't be, all be Reginald Denny when a group of racist black people tried to beat, did beat their windows out and smash their car and wanted to drag them out and beat their brains out. In fact, Reginald Denny received the sacrament having his face beat in. Remember famously, so they looked like the uh, uh, elephant boy? He deserved it. He was a devil. We'll be right back. All right, I'm going directly to Matt and Paul and Felix and Paul and Jeff and Steve and Richard right now. Then coming up, more and more racial attacks on whites and the media tries to cover it up. And then, don't worry, the Financial Times of London has the headline, Cheer up, the post-human era is dawning. The globalists are being very public now about their plans. You might have heard about that in my film, end game blueprint for global enslavement where i believe i coined the term post-human error or what i call the end of man mm -hmm. i'm not bragging i just i've read the globalist books they're just now going public with it nasa craft discovers heart shape on pluto during flyby i'll get into that i mentioned this antipsychotic use rising among teens and young adults uh, Daily Mail has top scientists saying they believe a global ice age is now coming. Uh, that's actually true, probably. I mean, there's no telling with the sun, but if you follow cycles, let's just say, <laughs> I wish they'd have put out more carbon dioxide, don't you? The problem is it doesn't really heat the earth. Uh, some evidence shows oxygen does, also a trash gas. Uh, but more plants would be a good thing for the earth, and more carbon dioxide does that. But hey, it's okay. We're not hyping global government now to save us from global warming. It's now climate change. So any change is our fault, and we should pay an indulgence to the Pope. Uh, I used to make a joke that it's like a in, in medieval times, you'd, you know, you'd, if you want to get your family out of purgatory or whatever, you, you give the Pope some money as an indulgence. And then I've always called carbon taxes an indulgence. People drive around Austin with stickers saying, my car is offset, I buy these carbon credits. <laughs> so Al Gore can fly around in jumbo jets. Uh, but now it's an actual carbon indulgence the Vatican wants to push. So, okay, sounds sounds good. Uh, let's go to Matt in Maryland. Matt, you're on the air. Welcome. Hey, uh, uh, thanks a lot for taking my call. I've been a Prison Planet uh, member for a long time, and I keep giving my information out to new people, trying to get them to kind of unplug from the Matrix. But it gets really hard when y'all keep comparing gay marriage to pedophilia and bestiality. I mean, gay, gay people getting married are not interested in raping children or animals. Taking consent and rights from children, their parents and animals, is a major problem, but it's not, it's a separate issue from letting adults engage in a contract. And the Confederate flag issue, too, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a battle that's been lost in more ways than one. I feel like, you know, if you, you keep fighting this issue when, you know, I say let people let, wave the flag because it, it tells me I don't want to have anything to do with them. It's really hard to bring gays and minorities into the fight when when you keep fighting battles that are going to ostracize and isolate. Sure. I mean, I'm not saying this is a seminar call, but it sounds like one. Look, I'm going to keep you there because you disagree, Matt. And I held you longer or gone to you earlier if I knew you disagree with me because I like to go to people that disagree legitimately. So here's the deal. You've built a straw man. I've never had the Confederate flag. I see the Civil War as a failure of this country. We were manipulated into it by British intelligence. Uh, the flag was never about slavery. That's a fact. I will not adopt the mental illness that it was about slavery and that it's a flag of hate because some crazy person on drugs made it that or white supremacists use it. Uh, okay, that's a danger where somebody uses a symbol. I mean, quite frankly, I said ban the American flag before Farrakhan said it, not because it's a bad flag, but it's had more slaves on it than that. It's this historical ignorance. It's the totalitarian left. Wanting to be able to remove terms, wanting to be able to control language. Okay, so you say, let them fly it, then I know who I don't want to be around. Mainly it's people saying, I'm a rebel, I'm cool, my truck's big, I don't care what you think about me. 
Okay, that's what the flags from motorcycle gangs, you'll see like Mexican motorcycle gangs with it on. I mean, it's, it's saying FTW, we do whatever we want. That's what it symbolizes as rebellion. In the military, it's been respected because it was one of the most uh, powerful rebel forces ever seen. Uh, the second toughest group would be the colonial forces. But hands down, military historians say the southern forces were the most hard-fighting, nonstop, probably some of the first examples of special forces. Okay, let's move past that. That's why the U.S. military loves the Confederacy. Nothing to do with black people, I will assure you. So I'm not defending it. I'm defending reality. Now let's move on to the gay marriage thing. I'm a libertarian, but if you're a real listener and not somebody with a script, you would know not hundreds, but thousands of times, and if you listen to my show the first 18 years, I didn't even cover this, I don't get into what you do in your bedroom, I'm, okay? I am not in people's bedrooms. I am not a Pharisee. I'm not a hypocrite. It, it, I, my world does not revolve around sex either, and so I'm sick of it. It's a football issue. It's not a federal issue. It's a distraction to be passed back and forth. Now, the truth is, there is a move at the UN, there is a move to sexualize children. Sumner Redstone has said that, and it's nobody's business to be trying to target children with Heather has two mommies, or you can't say boy or girl because somebody may not identify as that. That is space cult, suicide cult, exterminism, craziness. The eugenics transhumanist cult wants to confuse the general species Ahead of rendering us down and removing us, the decision has been made. Cheer up, the post-human era is dawning. The plan is an asexual humanoid, even if they decide to keep us around, stated in hundreds of textbooks. So understand, when I expose estrogen mimickers, feminizing men, giving women cancer, because it super feminizes them, that's not because I'm saying all gay people in history, again, using the word, Homosexuals, heterosexuals, it's not a crime, it's a scientific term, that all homosexuals, see, I'm bowing to be nice. Oh, I'll say gay. I don't care what the name is. People like the same sex. But then I submit and start using your first word. Now I must use all your words. And now I'm a computer that takes your culture, your download, your philosophy, and then I become a slave when I am undefinable other than I want human liberty. So that's what I stand for. On the whole issue, not what you claimed I did. You have about a two-minute response. Okay, I hear you. Those are terrible things going on in the world. But to say that the people who are in favor of gay marriage are also looking to rape children and animals, that's just the ter the, taking consent. Animals and children cannot consent. People, Government should have no right over what parents can do with their children. I agree with that. But that doesn't mean that two people shouldn't be allowed to engage in a contract when the government is already regulating that. More straw man. Exactly. I didn't say any of that. There is moves to make people pay to have arms and legs chopped off, transabled. Listen, I don't want to have to pay for people's sex changes. It's not because I care. I do not care. I get it. Some people want to be a woman. or Okay, I get it. The point is, is that I shouldn't have to pay for it. I agree, Alex. I agree. We shouldn't pay for that. But those aren't issues. Uh, I'm sorry, but your, the show is so much better when you leave those issues to TMZ and MTV. Those issues are just pop. They're not what's really going on. The but I can't send my kids anywhere where they're not taught, basically, that men are bad. It, it takes more responsibility for adults to have children these days. But you can't. You, you have to accept that the world is going to have these things now. You just you just got to work you, harder. You're not you're not listening to me. I I don't even I, I I do accept it. I'm not even thinking about it. You understand that I am not judging people or attacking them. I do not want my children told about heterosex, homosex, or anything else. I don't want them taught political ideologies. I want them taught basic science and how to learn and how to catch the spark of creativity. I want to be their parent, not the state. We'll be back with more calls. The 21st century is the century of people acting trendy and non-threatening and little pink and outfits going, ooh, ooh, when they're really just taking over. Because if the globalists can get us to submit to non-threatening garbage, we'll then submit to everything else that comes after that. That's what being conquered is. Cheer up! The post-human era is dawning. 
Artificial minds will not be confined to the planet on which we have evolved. We're going to get to that coming up. So vast are the expanses of space and time that fall within an astronomer's gaze that people in my profession are mindful not only of our moment in history, but also of our place in the wider cosmos. We wonder whether there is life elsewhere. Some of us even search for it. People will not be the culmination of evolution. Oh, we are near the dawn of a post-human future that could be just as prolonged as the billions of years of Darwinism selected that preceded humanity's emergence. You read this article, you understand their mindset. See, we're done. We were ugly. We were nothing. Those that accept it were better than us. They transcended humanity and just accepted that the evolution was to merge with machines, and they get into that. Meanwhile, we're debating Confederate flags and sex changes. But I have to because the public only wants to talk about that. And I have to reach in to the matrix with that and say, I will discuss the rebel flag with you. I will discuss the sex change. Now, they're putting poison in your water. Here they are admitting it at the White House to brain damage you and lower fertility. Here's the document your fertility's dropping. They say you're a scourge. It's the end of humans. Do you understand? Shut up, homophobe. Uh, excuse me, I would want to warn you, it's a scientific takeover. Uh, shut up, meanie. Uh, the foreign insurance companies wrote Obamacare to double and triple prices and reduce care and create death list. And here's Bill Gates admitting it. Shut up, shut up, you don't want me to have something free. It's mine, it's mine, they gave it to me. Bill Gates loves me. Uh, his dad ran Planned Parenthood. He's a psyops officer. He's heavily involved in intelligence ops. He's a eugenics officer. Look out, look out, he's your enemy. No, he's not, he likes me. He wants to give me something free. Uh, look, my socks don't match. I mean, okay, I get it. You win, you're more ignorant than anybody ever known. Have your way. Not everyone considers this an uplifting scenario. There are those that fear the artificial intelligence will supplant us, taking our jobs and living beyond the writ of human laws. Others regard the scenarios as too futuristic, so it just goes into the fact that it's foregone and this will just be dealt with. I'm going to cover this tomorrow. I want to go to your calls. Let's uh, right now, though, go to Paul in California. You're on the air. Thanks for holding. Yes, I'm doing well, Paul, in California. How are you today? I'm fine. I was just uh, thinking that this uh, hate stuff as far as the Confederacy and the Nazi flag um, is an attack on history. And Yes, an attack on history, reason, an attack on facts, yeah. an attack on symbols, an attack on language, an attack on communication. It is a new dark age where people can't tie their shoelaces, but they can get offended at brown paper bags. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, this uh, Christianity, they're probably going to turn against Muslim or Islam and uh, communist uh, religionless society. Well, that's the Albert Pike plan, and you're right. But there's one thing the left won't attack Islam. Mutilating women, bags on the heads, radical Islam, that's beautiful. I mean, they smoke hookahs. I mean, this is really stylish and, and, and radical. Um, but, but, but men and the West that empowered women, we're bad because the truth is we're the source of real liberalism that threatens the hijackers and the counterfeits of liberalism. You see, that's why they have to destroy the West because it's based in freedom. It's had its own problems, but per capita. And if they can remove that and dumb down the ideas that came out of the West, then they've won. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Uh, one more one more question. Mm -hmm. How do I find an affiliate in the San Francisco Bay Area that has you on the radio? Well, let me ask you a question. Are you a rhinophobe? I hope not. Well, that's because if you don't want to pay for me to have a nose job, you're a bigot against my big nose. <laughs> Can I send you a bill? If I wanted a nose job, I bet it cost $10,000. I actually like my nose, but hypothetically, if I wanted to get rid of my snout or change it, I want you to pay or you're a hate monger. Are you going to pay for my nose job right now? I want you to say you're going to pay, Paul. Well, if the government says it's friendly or uh, non-offensive. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right, God bless you. I appreciate your call. Um, let me give you affiliates. Uh, there's KSCO is the stronger station that goes into part of San Francisco out of Santa Cruz. It covers half of it. And then there's another affiliate there that's a sister station um, that also goes into San Francisco. You can go to GCNlive.com and find some of the affiliate list there. 
Uh, but we need more affiliates in California. We, we've only got like five affiliates in all of the state of California with 40 million people in it. Uh, let's go to another caller, another Paul. Then we'll go to Felix uh, in Hollywood, California. Paul in New Mexico. You're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, um, Alex, I'm a little nervous here. But anyways, I want to give you a Trump analogy and then uh, maybe a solution. I want to second Lord Mopkin's uh, solution. But with the analogy or the, you say, uh, you know, Trump's like the ringer. If I was to uh, drop a, a ring, you know, I'd put a Trump in there knocking out Rand Paul because they he's a, I feel Trump's like an inferior mess, messenger, you know? I mean, um if they can't attack Rand Paul directly, because he'd clean their clocks, just like well, well here's um, the deal. I, I, you on live when they invited you. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, we're going to delay it instead. They they can't go after you directly. They have to attack you so they can edit your words and whatnot. But uh, that's basically. And then I'd say Chris Christie would be the corner man for uh, Trump. There and then they got all these other organizations, the Ford Foundation and whatnot. Everybody on the outside cheering cheering Trump on as he knocks out the invisible man, which is uh, Rand Paul. <laughs> no, that's it. I mean, you've got it. That's the plan. And listen, I'm a libertarian. If you want to gamble, that's your issue. Uh, it's a total joke. It's rigged, just like going to college is for most. I mean, it's just a scam. It's a it's a schmuck's errand. Certainly college has been great in the past. Now, now it's a fraud. You know, to, uh, except if you're going to be a doctor or, or, or an engineer. But for most of it, it's a waste of money and time. But if you look at what Donald Trump is doing, he is basically just preparing the way for Hillary Clinton and blocking out the other 16 uh, candidates uh, that are there. And so uh, he's in the lead now uh, in major national polls with 15% above uh, Bush, Jeb Bush 13, Rand Paul 9.3. So both those guys, both Bush and Trump are ringers. Uh, over that. And, and again, I'm a libertarian. Uh, I didn't finish my statement. I'm bad about that. I appreciate your call. Gambling, if you want to do it, is your issue. But Donald Trump owns a bunch of casinos. Donald Trump's involved in a bunch of stuff. He's basically a front man for some very hardcore people. And he gives tons of money to the Democratic Party, more to Democrats than Republicans in the last 30 years. So you can bet this is all as phony as a $3 bill. And Donald Trump, I have it from high level sources, uh, is. Uh, Let's just say, with a name like Trump, they don't come after you. With a name like Carleone, they do. Don Trump will be back. Stay with us. I'm Alex Jones. You want the truth? Can you handle it? You're going to get it. I'm going to have to not get to the uh, latest uh, racial attacks on whites. Just to illustrate the numbers as well, just to show this whole media thing uh, is an attempt to actually hype more of that up where people feel like whites are so inherently evil they must be attacked. And I'll have to cover this more on the show tomorrow because I want to go to a bunch of your calls right now. Calls from Mexico, you name it. Not New Mexico, but actually Mexico. We have calls from New Mexico as well. But inquiry, psychologist group colluded with Pentagon, CIA on interrogations. Well, we already knew that, uh, but now the National Association of Psychologists and Psychiatrists uh, worked on that. That's up on Infowars.com. Texans organized Operation Counter Jade Helm to keep an eye on federal troops. And I like what Chuck Norris said about this. He said, listen, it's not the military we're worried about. It's who's commanding it. And anytime we try to investigate what the government's doing, that should be lauded, not attacked when you look into something. So nobody thinks it's an imminent takeover. The media has been misdirecting that. It's part of a larger conditioning process. New documents stretch uh, IRS scandal out to its third year. And, of course, it's come out that, indeed, they did target people with a plan to put their opposition in jail. So let me tell you, when the government starts trying to put people in jail who've done nothing, it has a name. It's called Hardcore Tyranny. H-C-T. All right, let's race through your calls, try to get to everybody here. I mean, we got like 15 callers, but I'll try to get six or seven of them. Uh, let's go to Tony in Mexico. You're on the air. Welcome. Hello, Alex. Um, uh, I want to talk to you about the Latino vote. Sure, go ahead. Um, uh, I just wanted uh, to let you know that um, the the Latinos are not all Democrats. I know that, and and they're not.
not they're not uh, that uh, stupid. So uh, I was thinking that if uh, you try to reach out to them, they're going to listen because they know something's wrong, but they don't know what it is. Um, so you know, if if uh, uh, anyone from the Rand Paul uh, group is listening, they should try to reach out to them. Just let let, that, let them know what the truth is. And uh, let them know that uh, what the Democrats are saying, it's not true. Because um, uh, you guys, uh, well, the Republicans always get misrepresented. And, it, like, they don't get the entire truth out there about uh, what the strategy is. Sure. No, that's a great point. The problem is Rand Paul has tried to reach out. The media won't cover it, so folks aren't aware of it. And then the Republican leadership has been infiltrated. So in many cases, they're just as bad. It's the same thing hitting every country. It's sophisticated fraud, sophisticated corruption. And then Jimmy Carter says the U.S. is basically declining because they've sold out everybody. I mean, it's globalism. Globalism hasn't helped China. It hasn't helped Mexico. It's enslaved everybody. But I, I, I want Mexico to be a great country. I wish Mexico was super wealthy and we'd merge with it. But that isn't what's happening. Instead, we're all collapsing by design because it's easier for these elites to control a bunch of poor, dumbed-down people than to basically coexist with a bunch of wealthy, powerful people. Do you see my point? Yeah, I understand, but I, I'm just saying that, you know, if they if they reach out and, you know, and, and let them know what, uh, you know, just give them a... a um immigration uh, strategy, something that makes sense. Because you know what, Alex, uh, Mexicans, um, uh, uh, most of them, they don't want to become Ameri American citizens. They just want uh, a job, maybe oh, work, for a work for a couple of years, and then make some money, come back to Mexico. Sir, you know? I do not blame people for wanting to come up here to get a better job. Globalism destroyed your country. I don't blame the individual. And I totally agree with what you're saying. God bless you. And, and I don't say this to to just sit here and be a patron of Hispanics and say this, when we go out and talk to the general public, I don't care if you're from Mexico or you're from Italy or from Russia. It's just foreigners, period. Know what the Declaration of Independence was. Know about the New World Order. Know the government ships and the drugs. No, no, no. You, they know light years more than the average American who just thinks everything's wonderful and nothing can touch them. I don't care what color an American is, on average... It's pathetic. And so then I ask myself, my God, if Mexicans I talk to in Mexico, and when I'm in California and stuff who are say, hey, I'm here illegally, I know what's going on, you know, I get it. I understand. I, the point is, whatever the globalists are for, I have to be against because I can intellectually show you how it's bad, but also I just know whatever they're pushing is, is, is total destruction because they are pure evil. And, and it took me a long time to come to grips with that fact. But I wonder with the corruption Mexico's gone through. Mexico just devalued its currency in the 70s and 80s like we're about to do. We've already done it. It just hasn't hit yet. And I think about how Americans in polls call Greece folks lazy and stupid. And people we talk to on the street say they deserve it. When we're in worse shape than they are. So, oh, Mexico failed. Oh, Greece is a joke. Oh, Ireland's a joke. Oh, but we're good. We, our financial house is just as bad or worse. Our politicians are just as corrupt or worse. And when it finally sinks and America finally falls, which I don't want to happen, but when we finally do, it is going to be hellish to be in this country. And that's why the elites are leaving. They have really screwed this country over. And the American people being lazy, and thinking we're exceptional just because we say we are. We were exceptional. Now we're exceptionally bad. So don't you ever think I'm on some high horse against people in Mexico or anywhere else. Let me tell you, when it comes down to being a joke, this country's it. But we have the paradox of still so many good people that work so hard and such great roots and so much that was exceptional. It's best of times, worst of times. I love this country so much. But my God, we've become pathetic. You know, America had a lot of problems, but the biggest thing is we wouldn't put up with being pushed around. And nobody, a foreign country, the King of England or Santa Ana or anybody was going to make us a slave. And we bowed down and became slaves. And we now are a nation of sheep ruled by wolves. And I cry for this country. Because when, the, when we collapse, not knowing how to do anything and being lazy and entitled, we're done.
we're done. And the globalists just hope to have us all race war with each other so they don't get in trouble. You're never going to escape this new world order, what you've done. Ah, I just ran it for five minutes and ran over all the callers' time. Felix in Hollywood, thanks for holding. You're on the air. Hey, thank you, my fellow American. Um, when I was eight years old, I, as a child, became a Christian. Uh, I'm your age. I grew up in the same world you grew up in. And, um, you know, I try to, I've been fighting right alongside you the whole time, uh, literally step for step. I went a different path, went to the Marine Corps. But anyway, the bottom line is, the world that we grew up in is gone and it frustrates me because I want to battle this and try to find an end. And, and the one thing that Jesus reminded me of just before I called was you have victory in me. And no, no, I totally get it. If, if we make ourselves wait, good and, and if we do the right thing and are an example, that's where the war is won. What I'm saying is we're seeing bondage becoming named as a right, an inalienable right. Bondage, homosexuality is bondage. Sin is bondage. Drinking too much is bondage. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, I agree it's a very destructive lifestyle on average. I don't hatefully say people are bad, but I do defend people's right to say it's bad. My point is, is that they've hijacked that movement to then bring in a whole nother movement that's, that, that is truly evil. I'm right there with you, bro. But what I'm saying is, is that Jesus Christ is coming back and the real Christians know what's up. And the, 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 the good fight is all we need to do is fight the good fight. And this is part of it. And uh, I just want to thank you, my fellow American, and God bless you and God bless America. Well, God bless you, my friend. God bless the whole planet. Uh, look, I'm out of time. I want to talk to Jeff and Steve and bohanna and bill and richard if you guys have the time get their numbers we'll call them tomorrow they'll be the first callers on the show and i'll give them each couple minutes i, I i'm sorry i'm out of time